you're new to a city, sometimes the best way to see it is to take a sightseeing bus tour. We have been on the city sightseeing buses before in other places, so we are going to take it again, right here in Athens. Can we also get a ticket for the Acropolis from you? No, ah, right. uh, at, only at the end of the can buy now because there is a different price uh, from the first November. Oh, I see. enjoying the ride so far. Yes, and we have a little bit of shade now here under these lovely trees. It's going to be a really hot day, so I think that the shade is going to come in handy. Yes, it's going up to 27 Celsius today, so we're getting quite a lot of winter sunshine. Hey, don't forget to put on some sunscreen, my dear. Yes, it's on. Athens has so many transport options, from buses, trams, trains, to the metro. Let's take a look. Okay, so we're going to get a five-day travel ticket for Athens. And we've come to Pariah Station. There's loads of machines here. There's also a ticket office. So we're going to hit our language of choice. We want to buy travel product. We want Athens area, five days. And we have a choice of how many we want. So we want two, go on, there we are, two. And we want to choose bank card if possible. No, it's not, let's do that, so it's cash only. Luckily, we do have cash. Right, okay. And there's a sign over here for the money, and it's 16 euro, 40 euro. So, <laughs> grab it. <laughs> Card printing in progress. And my change as well. There we go. Don't forget our money. And we have our tickets. 
and there we are we have athena ticket and i think you have to validate it before you go on it says the issue and use of the ticket is subject to conditions whatever they are okay so let's get traveling so we're here and we're going to follow this suburban line right up to Athens station right here The Athens Metro is a fast and efficient way to get around the city. We are heading home from our night out back to Piraeus and it's only 12 stops from the centre. A lot of graffiti everyone. This certainly reminds me of New York City. Well, the only thing is, in New York City, the same as in London, they wouldn't allow a train in service with this graffiti in the inside. Um, on the outside, possibly, but certainly not on the inside, no. <coughs> What's it like being on this train? Isn't it kind of weird? Hmm, yeah. <laughs> it's good that we have the option of taking either the metro or the suburban railway. Yeah, I think it would be bad if we were just limited to just one option. Mm. And it's not that far from the centre. We've got this fabulous view from the roof terrace of our hotel at Priusport. Now, why did you decide that we should stay here, Paul? I wanted to stay here because I didn't want to be in the metropolis Athens because I thought that it was going to be too busy and too crowded, too noisy. And I think I just wanted to be by the 
by the water, basically. And it's a great spot because if you want to take a ferry to one of the islands, which we will be doing, then you are close by and you don't have to travel here so that you can make a whole day of it and start off relatively early in the morning. I don't think that the commute is that bad anyway. I think it only took like about 20 minutes. To, to get, get into Athens centre. But today we're going to take a look around the wider Piraeus area because it's got a nice little town as well. well. I say little, it might be quite big. I think it is a port city actually. Oh, a port, a port city. So it's not a suburb of Athens, it's its not a town. suburb of no. um, Athens, it's its own city. And it's even got an M&S, another one. Most tourists visiting Greece are familiar with the name Piraeus because that's where the ships that head to the islands depart from. And while at first glance the port city doesn't seem to offer more than jam-packed streets and office buildings, it has a whole undiscovered side that is definitely worth exploring. Located just 10 kilometers away from Athens city centre, Piraeus is the place locals head for when they get an urge to take a quick glimpse of the sea and smell the salty air. Visit on a Sunday morning and you'll see cafes and restaurants by the waterfront packed until the sun sets. At night, the crowd moves to the city's lesser known neighborhoods where cozy bars with dim lights serve cold drinks under the sound of music that fits the atmospheric vibe. This is Port Square and this is the sort of the central transport area of Piraeus. Um, there is the suburban railway and two metro lines. Now we've been taking an overground metro line into the city, but we have also discovered there is an underground one uh, somebody told us about. They're not actually connected, so you have to come out of the main station and then go down um, escalators to get onto that particular line. And that's the one we're going to take now because it runs into the center of Korea City. Well, these trains seem much better than the other ones that we've been using. Um, this particular one doesn't seem to have any graffiti on it, which is good. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe we should have discovered it sooner. But at least we find it now. Yes, indeed, these trains are much better. This is a modern complex. What is this? This is magnificent, I guess, sculpture. It probably lights up at night. Do you know what I think it is? I think it's a map of the, port, of the port area, isn't it? Because I recognize these. Wow. Little areas, and it's obviously a grid street map.
Shall we discover the area? Yes. Destination Piraeus.com. That must mean we're here. Excuse my pronunciation, but we have arrived at the Demotico Theatro Station. Shall we take a walk down to the marina? Good idea. What do you think of the marina? Oh, this just makes me feel calm and I think it just brings back all good memories of when I'm by the sea. There's a lovely breeze and it's not overly warm today, although in the direct sunlight it does feel hot. feel hot, but as soon as you step into the shade it cools down a bit, but it's still short sleeve weather. Where are we, Paul? We are at the memorial to remember the genocide of the Greeks of Pontus. The artwork is centered on a low circular base of exposed aggregate concrete, featuring a stainless steel disc in the middle that bears the names of places in Pontus. The spring cylinders are constructed in such a way that one can identify the sea's endless movement, the water's changing course, the ebb and flow of faith, the ebb and flow of effort, the ebb and flow of refugees that never stop and keep bleeding out into the same seas. This cumulative wave is made of 360,000 small waves one for every soul departed.
Gosh, if I knew this place was so good, I'd have come here schooner. <laughs> Welcome to Greece. Now, if you're enjoying watching Paul and Marcus on YouTube, then please subscribe. We're going to take a trip on the tram and it's a little bit confusing but we've worked out that the number seven goes on a loop around the Prius area so we're going to do that we've seen the trams around and they look a little bit like the Nottingham ones don't they Well, we've just had a very interesting visit to the Athens Prius Electric Railways Museum. Now we weren't allowed to film inside because it's a private museum. It was started by a group of workers and it's absolutely fabulous because it gives an entire history of the electric railway and also the metro. There are many exhibits. One of the actual carriages and then they had signaling boxes um, that kind of 
um, help the trains come into the station. They had like the lines, like the status of the trains on the entire network. So that was interesting to see that type of display as well. And they also had uniforms and whistles, which I noticed one of them was made by a company called J. Hudson and Company in Birmingham, England. So it was all very interesting. It's on three levels. It's free to get into. It's at the Piraeus um, Subway Number no. One station, and um, it's open every day of the week from eight in the morning till two in the afternoon. And as I say, it is completely staffed and run by volunteers. We're heading up towards Laika Betis Hill and before we've even got there we've climbed what seem to be hundreds if not thousands of steps and with my gummy leg it's proving quite difficult but we're nearly there, come. Look, look. Oh hello. Bye bye. <laughs> now, Paul, you say there are spectacular views of Athens from the top of Lycabetus Hill. Acropolis. Oh, yes, to see the Acropolis. And thank goodness there is actually a cable car. Actually, I would call it a funicular railway to take us there because I'm completely out of breath and sweating bucket loads. So uh, let's go check it out. So we are now on board the funicular, as I would call it, and it's a bit dark in here, but I'm sure we will be heading up into the light very soon. And it looks as though we have a packed train, because uh, yes, so. it only goes once every half hour, out of season. I think um, in the summertime there's one every 10 to 15 minutes. Don't fall down, the steps are very steep. Ooh, this is nice, look. Mm. Lovely little gardens. Well, we are at the top of Lycabetes Hill and look at this fantastic view behind us. And this isn't even of the city, this is the back of the city, I think, and towards the hills. Our friend Evangelos will know what they're called, I am sure. <laughs> so, you must be wondering why are we in Athens? Um, yes, this... I'm wondering that as well. <laughs> This is one of the last Western European countries that we haven't been to in Europe. So then we decided that we couldn't go during the pandemic, which is why we're here now. But I don't know why we waited to come to Greece. 
No, I don't know. Maybe it was, it was because it seemed so far away. Mm. And maybe it was because there were other places that we said, oh, we must go there, we must go there. And then Greece was always sort of put on the, the back burner for some reason. No, but I think, I think that I've always wanted to go to Greece because we learned about it in European history back when I went to high school. And there would be things like um, Ares and then there would be things like Athena, Zeus, things like that, that we learned in the history books. So, it's all these names that you're familiar with, like the Acropolis and the Parthenon and all that sort of stuff. And you never really sort of think about, oh, you know, where it actually is and whatever. It's just, you know, it's such common sort of names that, that you hear. And, um, and yeah, so it's great to finally be here. So here at Lycabetus Hill, we have found the K Grill restaurant and we are having some traditional Greek food. What are you having, Paul? I am going to be having a traditional moussaka. And what exactly is that? It is made with aubergine, it's made with mincemeat, it has potatoes on it. It's kind of like a shepherd's pie or like a cottage pie of some sort, but it's made with aubergine, so it's a little bit healthier, I think. Okay, and I am having one of my favorites, which is squid. And to wash it all down with, we are having some traditional Greek beer. This is called a Fix Hellas. Cheers! Cheers to good health! Delicious! When we arrived at the airport in Athens, there was a sign saying, if you do not receive your receipt, then your items are free. So it seems to be a law in Greece that when you buy something, you must receive a receipt. And when you come to a restaurant, they'll give it to you usually in a little shot glass like that. And oh yes, Paul's just saying it's all scrunched up. And um, I mean, I think this is an absolutely fabulous idea because at home we use an app called Shopix where we take pictures of all our receipts and we get tokens and then we can swap them for uh, money off, coupons, uh, vouchers for Sainsbury's and other places. Uh, M&S as well and I'm always forever asking oh can I have the receipt so I think the fact that they must give you a receipt is absolutely brilliant idea oh wow it's ready I didn't expect the food to arrive so quickly this is my moussaka this is my squid and we got a big plate of fries to go on the side. Okay, this looks really big. It looks ginormous. <laughs> so let's cut this, shall we? So there's many different layers. There's mince in here. There's like a layer of cheese, I think. Mmm! It tastes very Moorish. There, there isn't such a meaty taste to it, but there are a lot of different textures from the mint, from the aubergine, oh, from some of this cheese and some of these vegetables. So I think it's a great way to get a variety in your diet and I think it's pretty good for you as well so eat up
This is the chapel of St. George at Lycobacchus. Please, Lord, um, give us a safe journey in Athens and hope we have a good time, see everything we need to, and hope we are healthy enough to be here and a safe journey back to Oxbridge. Thank you. Amen. Look over there. So what did you think of Lyca Betis Hill? <laughs> it's really steep. Yeah, we have actually come down a bit, some steps, but that's as far as we're gonna go because any further, there's like way down there and we are taking the cable car or the funicular railway back down again. But it has been absolutely fabulous. We've had a nice meal at the restaurant. K-Grill. And the weather has been absolutely tremendous again. Lovely blue skies. Mm.